Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on blood glucose homeostasis. In this video, what we're going to do is discuss uh, the insulin receptor. Okay, so we're going to discuss the peripheral effects of insulin, and we're also going to discuss uh, the insulin receptor and the pathway which it uh, leads to, basically. Okay, so how it actually um, achieves these effects in different tissues. Okay, so we'll start off basically with a summary of what insulin does in the different tissues, and then we'll look at how uh, the insulin receptor leads to pathways on the tissues, uh, which um, actually leads to that effect. Okay, right, so let's start off with the basic, um, basic release of insulin. Okay, so we start off with blood glucose having gone above uh, the uh, desirable level, basically. So blood glucose goes up. Okay, so maybe you've just eaten a meal in which you've consumed a lot of white bread, let's say, and uh, your blood glucose has shot up. Okay, so what this is going to lead to is it's going to lead to the beta cells within the islets of Langerhans releasing insulin into the blood. So what follows is the beta cells release insulin. So insulin goes up within the blood. Now, what is insulin going to do? Well, basically, there are three main tissues which insulin acts on, which are the liver, the uh, skeletal muscle, and then uh, the adipocytes. Okay, so let's draw these now here. So um, we have the liver here. So this is the liver, okay. And uh, we'll draw some skeletal muscle as well. So maybe we'll draw the biceps muscle. So let's just have something that looks maybe a little bit like this. And I'll make it more obvious, I think, by um, colouring in the belly red. Okay, so here is a skeletal muscle, and those end portions are the tendons. Okay, so this is a skeletal muscle, maybe the biceps muscle, that's what it looks like. Although I've only drawn one head, so you know, it can't be the biceps. Um, it's just some skeletal muscle. Okay, right, uh, so this is skeletal muscle. In fact, I should label these up. Let's say this is the liver. Okay, this is the skeletal muscle, and then we'll show some adipocytes as well. Okay, so uh, down here we'll have some adipocytes, okay? And the adipocytes, remember, are these uh, cells that often look like rings when you see them in histology, because all you can see is the nucleus and a thin ring of cytoplasm, and then the middle bit is just um, dazzling white, and that's because all of the lipids would have been stored in the middle bit, uh, but they're uh, lost in the fixing process. Okay, so here are our adipocytes here, and I might colour those in as well. They, uh, yellow seems like a good colour to colour in adipocytes down here. Oh dear, that's smudged nastily. Here are our adipocytes. Right. Okay, so, uh, the peripheral effects of insulin are going to mainly be on these free tissues. Okay, so, uh, insulin will work on uh, skeletal muscle cells, it will work on hepatocytes, and it will work on adipocytes. Okay, so, what is it going to do? Well, basically, in skeletal muscle and uh, hepatocytes, insulin triggers the insertion into the me cell membrane uh, of a certain transporter, which transports glucose, known as the glucose transporter 4. So let me show this. So basically, uh, if this is the cell membrane, usually the glucose transporter 4 is not in the cell membrane. Instead, uh, they are kept within vesicles, basically. So here is some vesicle, and in the membrane of the vesicle, you then have the glucose transporter 4 proteins, okay, which I'll colour in in blue. So here's one in blue. Here's another one, and I've drawn four of them. But of course, there'll be hundreds, if not thousands, of the things in the vesicle. Okay, uh, so usually these transporters are not actually on the plasma membrane. They're instead stored in these little storage vesicles down here. So this is the glucose transporter 4. And for short, the glucose transporter 4 is often abbreviated to GLUT4. So you take the glue from glucose, 
okay you take the T from transporter and then you put the 4 so glut 4 okay uh, now basically uh, this is the case in both skeletal muscle cells and adipocytes that you do not have this glucose transporter 4 in the cell membranes of the cells of the adipose tissue and the skeletal muscle. Instead, they are stored within these storage vesicles and basically what insulin is going to trigger is it's going to trigger the uh, movement of the vesicle up to the plasma membrane and the fusion of that vesicle with the plasma membrane so that the GLUT4 transporters are put on the plasma membrane. Okay, like so. And what will then happen is they transport the glucose from uh, the blood into the cell. Now, the reason you don't have these GLUT4 transporters uh, on the membrane all the time is that uh, they aren't unidirectional. It's not like they just allow the movement of glucose into the cell. They also allow the movement of glucose out of the cell. Now, if blood glucose is not very, very high, then what can happen is if you had these GLUT4 transporters in the membrane of these adipocytes and these skeletal muscle cells, what you'd actually find is that glucose would move out of those cells into the blood. So you only put them in when you know that blood glucose is very, very high, and therefore you can guarantee that the glucose is going to move in from the blood into the cell, basically. Okay, and of course, when insulin is high, you know that blood glucose is high, and therefore you can put these GLUT4 transporters uh, in the um, plasma membrane and get glucose moving into the cell. So you're going to get glucose moving into the adipocytes and into the skeletal muscle cells. Uh, there is a different transporter that is permanently on the uh, surface of the liver cells known as GLUT2. Okay, so this doesn't happen in uh, liver cells, it's something that happens in adipocytes and skeletal muscle cells. Okay, now, uh, so when um, glucose goes up in the bloodstream, it's going to go into hepatocytes via GLUT2. So let's have this as a hepatocyte. So there is GLUT2 in the membrane of the hepatocyte. And we'll have this in turquoise. So here is GLUT2. And uh, when blood glucose goes in, goes up rather, uh, glucose is going to go into the hepatocyte through this GLUT2. And also it's now going to go into the adipocytes and the skeletal muscle cells via uh, GLUT4. Okay, so we've got glucose going into all um, three forms of these cells. Okay, now in the adipocytes, what you're going to do is convert this glucose into fat. Okay, so you're going to make acetyl-CoA molecules from the glucose, and then you're going to use these to synthesize fats and store them within the adipocytes. Whereas in the liver cells and also the skeletal muscle cells, what will happen is you start polymerizing uh, the glucose together to make glycogen. So in adipocytes, what are they going to do with the glucose? They're going to turn it into fats. Okay, uh, in the skeletal muscles and the hepatocytes, they're going to polymerize it into glycogen. So basically, glycogen is the name for uh, glucose bound to glucose bound to glucose bound to glucose. So if I just res represent glucose by a hexagon here, then basically you'll bind glucose to glucose in the one four fashion, basically. Okay, like so. And uh, you'll make huge, great polymers of this, and this will be glycogen. This is what's known as glycogen, and uh, glycogen will be stored within the hepatocytes and the skeletal muscle cells so that it can be later broken down. Now, it's stored in the skeletal muscle cells so that it can later be broken down, and the glucose can then be used by the skeletal muscle cell when you next exercise. Okay? Uh, this uh, system with the GLUT4 only being present when blood glucose is very high means that uh, the glucose does not leave the skeletal muscle cell once it's gone in. So once you take the glucose into the skeletal muscle cell, it's polymerized into glycogen, and that glycogen is the skeletal muscle cell's personal energy store. It is not going to be released back into the blood. Okay, whereas it's the, contra uh, the contrary for the uh, liver cells. In the liver cells, they store the glycogen, but when blood glucose later goes down, what they will do is they'll break down the glycogen and release it back into the blood to help blood glucose uh, be maintained at a uh, reasonable level.
Okay, so the liver cells uh, store it temporarily uh, for the rest of the body, basically, uh, so that they can release it back into the blood, whereas the skeletal muscle cells are more selfish. They are making these glycogen stores for themselves, basically. And then the adipocytes are creating fat stores, which, of course, can later be released into the blood as well. Okay, right. Uh, another final thing to say is that uh, in all of these types of cell, what will also happen is the activation of the insulin receptor will activate growth pathways. So it activates mitosis, it activates cell division. Okay, right. So we've now discussed the big picture of what insulin is going to do in these three different tissues. What we now want to look at is uh, how the insulin receptor actually achieves all of these effects, i.e. how insulin binding to the insulin receptor on the surface of these free um, tissue cells um, causes these different effects within these different cells. Okay, so we'll begin that in the next video.